Okay, so I wanted to make this video um, for those that were concerned for my Christianity and such. And I've gotten messages from my um, Habesha brothers and sisters um, who were concerned about my spirituality and where I am spiritually. And I genuinely, um, honestly, uh, thank you for it because, you know, like I said, like I always say, we're made for each other. And if you think that somebody's on the wrong path, um, then you should always reach out and talk to them about it. Um, my problem, however, comes um, when we're made to feel like we're being silenced because we're Christians. I believe that Christians should always advocate for what is right. Um, and there's a lot of instances in the Bible where um, it shows that we need to be advocates for the poor and for the weak and such. My stance with the Oromo protest still stands. And I also want to say that I do not have any kind of hate towards any group or any race for that matter. What I hate is what is being done to the Oromo people. How they're being oppressed, how they've been brutally killed, discriminated against and such. And I'm not just saying this because um, everybody's saying it and such. I've experienced it, but like myself, I've experienced this and my family has experienced it. And so this is not something that I'm just making it up and making um, making it seem like it's exaggerated. It's not exaggerated. My problem is when an Oromo person dies because they're Oromo. And you should care about it, not because you're Christian, just because you're human, not because you're any kind of religion, just because you're human, you should care that another person is being killed. That is humanity to me. You see, for those of you that don't know me, I was born in a place called Matu. And that's when I realized the discrimination that took place in Oromia. I've experienced that just because you're Oromo, you could go to jail. Just because you're Oromo, you could get killed. Just because you're Oromo, they could come to your house and search your house without a warrant or evidence. Just because you're Oromo, you could be gunned down and you could be discriminated against. Just because you're Oromo, you might not get the job. Just because you're Oromo, your identity is taken away. For you to be assimilated to something different, to be successful in life, to have an actual life, you have to change your identity, change your name. And that is why I say that the Ethiopia you know and the Ethiopia I know is not the same. The Ethiopia you know is filled with diversity, filled with celebrating different cultures, different ethnic groups, and um, accepting different languages but for the Oromo people it's different and we have stories to tell you upon stories of the discrimination that took place the the police brutality against us the systematic um oppression but you have to listen to learn it you see you're listening to attack and you're listening to just say well this happened well that happened and instead of actually listening to our pain and trying to understand where we're coming from well, you see, the books you've been reading are written with people that are from your place and from your uh, perspective. So when I give you books to read or articles to read, for instance, about Milenik and how horrible he was to the Oromo people, don't just shut it down saying, well, that is written from the Oromo person's perspective or an Oromo author wrote that. What did you expect? Our pain and our struggle was written by our own people. So just try to understand that. And the reason we're bringing, bringing that up is to show that how long the Oromo people have been struggling. It's not like, let's not distract ourselves, right? Okay, that is the past and you might not believe the past. Okay, good for you. But at least believe what is in the present. Believe what is going on right now when you're alive. Believe the police brutality against the Oromo people. See the facts. The Oromo people make up the 86% of the prison system. Why? You see, if we're not able to understand each other's pain, if we're not able to listen to the oppressed, if we're not able to feel the pain when um, a person dies because of their race, when a person's identity is taken away, if, if we don't feel that pain, if we can't give the Oromo people the human rights, the basic rights in their own country. That 
That's when I say, enough is enough. Let my people go.